All right, uh, my name is BJ, and uh, doctoral candidate in, edu in adult ed at USF. And today we're going to look at how we can hopefully quickly and easily create a web app that you can use in your classroom as kind of like maybe an educational module or uh, extra, extra, extra work on materials that you have. And what we'll end up looking at is how you can embed pictures, videos, and then even possibly a quiz into your, your web app. And, uh, and do you know what I mean when I'm saying a web app? Like, it's going to be online, but with a web app you can uh, add it to your home screen, and the one we'll create today, you can add to your home screen, it'll look like an app um, on your phone, and unless you put like online content, if you're putting in all the content manually, it'll be available offline too. So, but obviously YouTube videos, if you put a YouTube video, it won't be, but anything that's static will be, so that's the information. Okay, so we'll look at why, why you may want to build a web app. Um, we'll look at some apps that are out there already for education. We'll look into a way to use how to create it, which is called jQuery, and uh, eventually look at how to do the quizzing if we have time, and then how to deploy it, or one way of deploying it. So this video was done by a, a marketing uh, firm, you can see, but and whether the stats are 100% correct, I do not know, but you get the idea that er, you know, more and more students have access to mobile. They're even saying, because of mobile devices, you can starting to close the, the digital divide because more people can get access to mobile as they may not be able to get access to a computer. So if you're making your materials optimized for mobile, I'm just saying, you know, easy to use on a mobile device. Like if you go to some websites and you on your phone, the links become really, really small and your finger is, you know, as big as your finger is. And so sometimes you may hit two or three or the link you don't mean. So we want to make, you know, stuff we're making for education optimized. That way, if a student's trying to answer a question and there's a multiple choice, they meant A, but because their finger accidentally hits C because they're so close together, that's going to give them a wrong answer and they didn't, they knew the right answer. So that's one thing. Or if they want to look at a specific video and they can't get to it, they'll get frustrated. So you're not going to use it either. So we'll, that's what we're going to look at today, how to create something that's optimized for it. Right, so if I, if I had to choose between uh, a mobile web app versus a native application on a phone, it really is dependent upon um, your end goal. So if you're looking to target a wide range of devices and a broad audience, you really need to go with mobile web because it can go across those different mediums a lot more seamlessly. Um, whereas the native apps and the you know, things you have to download from App Store um, really require uh, you know, specific de device catering. You have to code for those devices um, specifically, and you also have to go through um, downloading them from the App Store. So he mentioned a couple of barriers to why not to do a native app, especially maybe for educators. One that stood out for me was having to code for different types of devices. And that would kind of require knowing what mobile devices your students would be bringing into the classroom or have access to at home. Uh, 
coding for an iPhone versus coding for an Android device are two different things, and how many of us are coders? No, so that immediately Nix is a native app. And then a web app, which we're going to create today, you heard, goes across all, a lot of device platforms. So it, doesn't, it almost doesn't matter. As long as their phone can access the internet, uh, they'll be able to access the content you're creating. OK, so this is to look at a couple or a few uh, web apps that have been created by reputable places. So you have uh, Educause, their blog, uh, the, I guess, journal. They've made one to access a lot of their materials. Uh, the Khan Academy, if you were to go to khanacademy.org, you could see it. If you, does everyone have that simulator up now? Um, are you on yours? Yeah, so the iPhone simulator should be running maybe in the background. Yes. And you can go to khanacademy.org. And it's their regular website, but they have it set up so if someone arrives there with their mobile device, it gives them an optimized experience, a better view that's easier to use. Versus if you were to go to Khan Academy on the browser you have open, you see a completely different view. So I'm going on Safari then, right? Mm-hmm. If you look on. On your. Oh, you're on the iPad. That's fine. Okay. I don't know if it will work actually. Super Khan Academy. Mm-hmm. Just ConAcademy.org. Oh, 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 okay. You can also Google it on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it gives you the optimized view too on that. Does it? Okay. Yeah. Or it it's command and the arrow. Command. command, arrow key left or right will make the iPhone simulator be landscaped. What is that? Okay. Your the arrow so keys. You know oh, like he's got it. You're looking at it this way, and you want to no. Okay. Look at it and go. If like if you're looking at it like this, mm -hmm. and you want to look at it like this, mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing. Oh, okay, okay. So if you want to do that with your simulator, yes. Yeah, you hold command. down the command key. And the oh. Key. So it's like turning your oh, device. You don't need to do oh, it. Oh, those arrows. Asking. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to do it. I was just asking if, if you want to do that. So uh, so there's one you can look at on the device, but NC State gives one. Uh, Cornell has an, a web app. NC State is a tour of their campus, so it's tons of pictures. Um, let's see if I can open it up. So you can see they have easy navigation buttons, big picture design inside. So that's fine. I'll go to places. And it has a list, listing of different places. This could be a listing of different courses or topics you want to have within your web app. And it provides pictures and then more information as well. And then this one is the one Stanford has used. So they have a picture at the top. Um, they provide their news and events. So I can go to here. And then this one actually jumps back to their actual website. So you could actually link to other websites as well. But we kind of get the idea of what you can do with the web app and what you can put it in and how it will look like. And then this is one we did for uh, the I teach program as a mock-up. And I'll show this one really quickly. And this one provides content and videos. Mm. 
so a video will play, and it also has quick navigation along the bottom, which we'd call a footer. So we have the header at the top, with, which is more like your title of where you are. It lets the user know where they are within your web app. Because even though we're, we're going to be creating one page, on your phone, it'll look like you're going to different uh, pages. So you would have to create a header. We put video, text, and then you can have quick navigation down the bottom along your footer. which is basically what I outlined here. Your header for your titles, they have a back or a home button that you would have. Your footer down below, so you'd have a uh, quick navigation to maybe the most commonly visited places you want your students to go to. This could be slightly different than your front page, which would have a list of everything. It may, it may have four common areas. And then, of course, in the middle is just our content area. Are there any questions or thoughts on what I've presented so far? Pretty straightforward. So what do we need to build a mobile web app? Does anyone have any ideas before I show? Okay. One thing we'll need is to know how to do HTML5. Um, it's a new standard. It's becoming standardized, I guess. Uh, over the past year or two. And HTML5 is just your content. The other thing is CSS3. And the CSS makes all the pretty, make it look pretty, the reds and everything, and the transitions. And the last thing is JavaScript is to make it dynamic. Well, how many of us know all of that? Very few to none. So that's why uh, there's, there's different frameworks, there's tons out there, but a good one I found is jQuery Mobile. And it lets us it does the back end JavaScript, it does the back end uh, CSS, and it does most of the HTML for you. The stuff we're going to do today, well, if you know HTML, you can enhance it. If you know CSS, you can enhance it. But the stuff we'll do is copying and pasting from stuff like YouTube. YouTube gives you uh, the HTML to put a video into a website. Flickr will give you the HTML if, uh, if a picture is not under copyright. They'll give you that information. So it's not that you have to know it, it's just you do have to be able to access it, maybe understand it. Um, I'm going to go to the documentation. So if you wanted to go on the website, you could. It's called jQueryMobile.com. And so if you get deeper into it uh, and decide you like this and you want to browse or get your tech uh, teacher using it, they do have a pretty uh, comprehensive documentation. I'm going to click on Docs, and it gives it to you in an example format. So I'll click on Anatomy of a Page, and it actually gives you the HTML. So you just copy and paste it into a, a blank text file. So you don't have to know a whole ton of code. But then even then, you could be saying, you know what, that's still a little too much for me. Well, luckily for us, they've also uh, had this drag and drop editor, which is what we're going to use today. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it, so Kodika, I guess. Kodika. Yeah. And it lets you do a drag and drop. And so then I could just drag a page header on. And it has theme, so I can tell it what color I want it to be. I can drag my page footer and tell it I wanted a different color. And I can drag my list view, which may be your main menu. And it's at the bottom, but I'm going to go to a different one. So don't worry about it for right now. So all of that's very easy, and that looks simple to use, and that's something you could do, correct? You feel? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the iTeach website.